channel. My name is Delena if you are new here and if you are not new here thanks for coming back and thank you for your support. It is Wear Test Wednesday. If you don't know every Wednesday I test out a new product, a lot of foundations and I test the wear time on them. Whether it is the first time I am trying them out or whether it is doing like a full on review for you guys I'm always testing out a new product on Wednesday and today I am testing out the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Foundation. Now I have worn this foundation a couple of times so I already kind of have my thoughts on it. I've already tried it with a couple of different primers but of course I want to show you guys how it wears throughout the day so that you're not just taking my word for it but that you can actually see for yourself how it lasts, how it acts, where it breaks up or doesn't break up and everything in between. So I have all of the details pulled up on my Sephora app. This product, let me first say this because I always forget to say this, retails for $41. Under the details section it says that the coverage is medium, that the finish is matte, and it says it's a shine controlling, oil free, water resistant, and complete coverage liquid foundation. It's funny that it says complete coverage liquid foundation because to me complete coverage means full coverage but it says that it's a medium coverage. What it is formulated to, it hides imperfections, evens out the skin tone, and mattifies with a non-oily, perfectly powdered finish. The result is flawless and lasts for hours. And then it says, although this foundation provides full coverage, the end result is completely adjustable to fit your needs. A little goes a long way. But it says the coverage is medium. Because it has like a little coverage section and it kind of qualifies it or categorizes it medium matte but in all the other descriptions it says it's a full coverage so in my experience it's a medium to full it starts out as a medium you can build it up to a full so it's both and it doesn't have a recommended usage other than it says use it with the makeup forever number 122 blending brush so I guess apply it with a brush so I'm going to do that I'm gonna apply it with my Sephora 202 brush by the way I think Sephora brushes are vastly underrated I think that they are fabulous. So I have the shade number 15, which is the lightest shade and it's going to look too light for me upon initial application. But one thing I want you guys to keep in mind with this foundation is that it does dry down darker than how it first initially applies. Cause whenever I first apply it, I'm like, oh, that's a little bit light. But then like an hour later, I'm like, no, it's pretty much the perfect color. So keep that in mind whenever you're picking your shade. Maybe if you go to like Sephora to get matched, make sure that you try a shade, you wear it around for a little bit, like 30 minutes or so before you decide that you like that shade or not. Just keep that in mind or get a sample, wear it at home, whatever you want to do. Just make sure that you get a good shade because it is going to change color a little bit within that first hour of wearing it. All right, let me squeeze some of this out onto my tray. Oh, and let me do primer on one side. What primer should I do? I've really been enjoying the Hourglass Veil primer recently, so I'm just gonna put that on one side of my face. This side, my problematic side. If you have already been following me, then you know this already. I do not have oily skin, so the mattifying quality is not super important to me. I still do get a little bit of oil production, so we shall see if it will control the oils in this region here. Usually my makeup starts to break up around here and around here and on my chin. Grab a mirror and I'm just gonna start in the center of my face. See how light it looks for me right off the bat. It looks way too light. The past times that I've worn this, I have applied it with a sponge. This is my first time applying it with a brush based off of the Sephora recommendation. So I wonder if it will make a difference in the longevity or how it wears or anything like that. I do feel like my product is like I'm getting better coverage with a brush for sure. My skin is like freaking out right now. I just got a facial the other day. I think it's just purging. I think. I don't know. But also, I did just start the Whole30 diet today. Like today is literally my first day. I'm drinking black coffee right now. Can you see it? It's black. Which I actually do. I love black coffee also love creamy and sugary coffee. <laughs> the reason why I think it's not tied to my facial is because I'm getting all these breakouts on my neck, which I know that breakouts around here typically mean hormonal. So hopefully my hormones aren't freaking out. Hopefully my new diet will help to calm everything down like ASAP because I am not interested in having all these breakouts everywhere. Like I have them all throughout here, 
all around my cheek area, all down here. Like, what is going on? I'm just bringing that down my neck to cover the mess I have going, going on here. All right, I just want to build it up in a couple areas, like around here, where I have these breakouts. So this is the issue that I've had with this foundation. Pretty much every time I've worn it is building it up on my nose. Because of the matte formula, it's like it kind of picks up the places that have already set and I don't know, it just kind of doesn't look very smooth. Like it kind of looks patchy and textured. And this is the issue that I've had with this foundation before. Applying it with a sponge or brush like I'm having the same issue. And overall, it just looks very matte, which is the point. It's the matte velvet foundation, but it's like not my preference in finish for a foundation, that's for sure. It definitely feels very matte too, which I have normal to dry skin, so I don't know. Actually, in this season, I would say I'm pretty much just normal. Like, I wouldn't even consider myself normal to dry. I really only get drier in the winter, which is normal. So with that, this foundation feels matte. Like it feels like it is almost like sucking the life out of my skin matte. Like it's so matte. Like I can feel it on my face. Like my face feels almost a little bit dry. So there's that. I'm gonna try not to spray any like setting spray or anything over it. I am gonna spray my Beauty Amplifier from Sephora Collection cause I do really like that one and I do normally spray that on my face on a regular basis. So I am gonna spray that one and that one will hopefully help me feel a little bit more hydrated. But this is like, you don't need powder for this. I mean, unless you're truly oily, definitely put some powder around those oilier areas and where your foundation tends to break up. You can maybe even apply powder beforehand. I don't know how how that would work with this foundation but that is a trick like applying your setting powder before you apply your foundation to give it like a little barrier but I don't know this foundation I feel that I won't really be reaching it on my own just because I don't have oily skin and I don't like my skin to feel dry you know what I'm saying and I applied moisturizer and everything beforehand so it's not like my skin was already dry like even to the touch I'm like ugh. So here is how everything is looking right now with no product on it. As you can see, the coverage built pretty well. So it definitely started as a medium coverage, medium to full. And I just built it up in these areas, like especially around my nose, just to kind of get it even. And then anywhere that I have those breakouts. But yeah, it does build well. It's just something about my nose area. It just feels like it's not sticking and settling down completely. So, which has always been my experience with this guy. So I am going to go and apply the rest of my makeup and we will see how this foundation lasts throughout the day. If it falls apart, if it stays together, maybe this is the new holy grail for oily skin. If it cannot stay together on my skin, who is not oily, I don't know how it's going to stay together on other people's skin, but we shall see how it lasts. So, I will see you guys in my next check-in. Oh, and the time is 11.07 right now. All right, here we are guys, check-in numero dos. I am finding this foundation is lasting really, really well, actually. The only place that it's really broken up a lot is around my chin area. It's broken up a little bit around my nose on both sides but in here it's actually stayed pretty well please ignore my breakouts which normally i do get quite a bit of oil production here my foundation tends to break up but from what i can tell it's actually lasted really well and it hasn't broken up around my nose maybe just it has rubbed off in some places where i've touched my nose because i touch my nose a lot because i don't know it's a weird habit for me i'm a freak i don't know it's lasting really really freaking well um from the primed to the unprimed side, I would say that there's not a huge difference. I'm looking. It's just overall, it's just the matte texture of it. So um, I am not a big fan of the matte texture, but oh my gosh, is this the most matte I have stayed? in a long time. So if you have oily skin, this might be a really good foundation for you. I mean, it has completely controlled my oils at least. I mean, normally I'm getting quite a bit of shine in here and I have like virtually no shine. I have no shine other than the shine that I've added on my nose. 
virtually no shine in here. And the only shine that I'm getting is a little tiny bit of shine on my chin from where it has started breaking up, but really nothing. Like it's really held my shine down. It's kept me completely matte all day, which is like, that never happens. So, I don't know. Is it my preference in foundation so far? No. Is it doing exactly what it says it's going to do? Yes, it is. So this is my check-in for now. I will probably be wearing it for uh, maybe a couple more hours. I am now at, I applied it around 11 and it is almost 10. So we're coming up on 12 hours, but we are at 11 hours right now. But this is really good for 11 hours. Like that's where we are right now. I will see you all in my final check-in. All right, you guys, so we are at 12 hours, actually a little past 12 hours now of wearing this foundation. And I have to say, this has held up really, really freaking nicely. It has started to separate a little bit around my nose area and even just a teensy bit on my cheeks, but nothing that's like really noticeable around my nose. I don't know why, but it basically just like always wears off just around this nose area right here. And then it has gotten a little bit past around my chin area but of course I eat and things can move around. <laughs> Definitely settled into my fine lines on my forehead, which is pretty typical, especially for matte foundations to do. So I do really, really like the longevity of this product. And obviously it stayed really, really well. And it has controlled my shine a lot. Like I still have a little bit of a shine, but nothing compared to what I normally have at 12 hours into my day. Like this has almost kept me completely matte. I just have a little bit of a glow, but like, like, I feel like most of that is just from my highlighter, even though I have a little bit in here and even whenever I touch my cheek, I can feel a little bit of oil production, but it's really nothing substantial. Like I'm actually really, really happy with how well it has stayed in place. However, and this has always been the thing with really matte foundations is that I don't like the texture of it. Like I feel for oily skin, since you guys have a lot more moisture in your skin that it will probably sit a little bit better but for me somebody who is normal to dry it just makes me look and honestly feel dry like I feel dry on the outer portions of my face like I can feels like I'm lacking a little bit of moisture it's nothing substantial I don't feel like I'm like oh my god I'm like the Sahara Desert over here it's not like that but it's just not definitely not my first choice in foundation just because I yeah, I don't like the texture of it, but the longevity has been really, really awesome, which I'm really finding is like a trend now. I'm like, it's either wonderful texture or wonderful longevity. Like you don't get a ton of both. Like either the texture is a little bit off and it wears really well throughout the day or the texture is really nice and it doesn't stay. So it feels like one or the other with this one. And my neighbors are like freaking out right now. Like they keep making a bunch of like banging noises and stuff like that. And it's like scaring me. I'm like in my house and I'm like, what's going on? And then I heard someone like shouting and I'm like, they're just freaking out. But anyways, so that is where we are. Do I think it's worth the money? Yes, for oily skin. If you are normal to dry or if you're like a true combination skin to where you get really oily in here and really dry out here, that would kind of be up to you because it depends on what you like and what your preference is because you could probably go either way. You could probably make it work if you wanted to or you know, there are other foundations that aren't as matte as this one. It depends on what you're looking for in a foundation whenever it comes to combo skin but for oily skin I actually do I would highly recommend this I mean look at how well it has lasted and controlled my oils like my forehead is almost still completely matte you know what I'm saying it has done so so well at controlling my oils and just lasting throughout the day so I do highly recommend this product I think it is worth the $41 if you're looking for something to keep you matte wear 
all day long. So I think that pretty much wraps up this video. Let me know if I left anything out or left any questions unanswered. I hope that this tutorial kind of helps you in all of your shopping endeavors, that it helps you kind of decide what you want to go for and maybe what you don't want to go for. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up before you leave. And if you are subscribed, make sure your notifications are on by hitting that little notification bell because what's the point of subscribing if you don't know when I'm gonna upload, you know? I will see you all in Friday's video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Um, so if you're new here, I, it, frick, my t intro, okay.